Hello again, Bulldogs. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, we need to go over your academic vocabulary for this unit. There's not a lot of it, but some of it is brand new and we definitely need to talk about it so that you can understand what I'm expecting of you um, as we go on. So, let's just get to it then, shall we? So, part of this unit, you are going to be expected to annotate. Um, in fact, that is an assignment you have, I, I wanna say Thursday. Um, and you've done it before, I know you have. So, we need to know what annotating is. And that is just taking your notes as you read because that's gonna increase your understanding and it's gonna help you make your different connections with the text. And keep in mind, annotating looks different for everybody, okay? Explicit meaning is another one that you may not have heard. Um, it's an idea that is closely stated in the story or it is explained, um, it's unambiguous and you don't have a whole lot of room for negotiation. It's, this is gonna happen. So I have given you the underlining of EXPL, expl, explicit, explained. That is the only way I'm gonna remember it. Um, and the way you can think about explicit um, meaning is your mom gives you explicit instructions to clean your room and do your homework. That doesn't, that doesn't leave any room for thinking outside the box, any room for maybe I'll go have a snack. Now you have specific explicit instructions on what you need to do. We're also gonna be talking about implicit meanings. It is an idea that must be inferred through an analysis of details, actions, tone, dialogue, body language, visuals, et cetera. Um, so I have impl underlined. Implicit is implied. It's not specifically said, but you know what it means. So an example I gave you is if a teacher is tapping her foot and staring at you, it usually means she wants something. You don't know what it is until you know what the situation is, but she doesn't stand in front of you tapping her foot staring at you if she doesn't want you to say or do something, okay? In friends, this is a fun one. Um, you will learn and you'll be practicing using what the text says, what is included in the text. You're gonna use that to understand what is not actually said. Um, so if someone is giggling, you can infer that they found something funny, okay? Why else would someone laugh? Key ideas, this is another big vocabulary term. Um, they're the most important ideas in the text. Um, you may have referred to them as main ideas before. We are moving on to their key ideas. The keys to the text are your key ideas. Note taking, this is not annotating. It's similar, but it's not the same. It is a study skill and it is gonna be outlining and summarizing ideas of a lesson, a book, or any other source of information you might have. That could be a newspaper article, that could be a reading comprehension passage, okay? And that's gonna help you to retain your information longer. It's very similar to annotating, but you can't annotate a lecture. If I give you a lesson, you can't annotate what I say. So that's where you have note taking coming in handy. Paraphrasing, that is putting text in your own words, okay? If you don't put it in your own words, that is plagiarizing. Plagiarism, uh, no, you don't want that. So paraphrasing is taking what is actually written and you might make it simpler, you might make it shorter, um, but you're gonna put it in your own words so that you can retell the story later. Summarizing is not retelling the whole story. It's just stating main ideas of a text in order. Usually when you're gonna summarize, you're gonna focus on the five. Someone wanted, someone wanted something, but something happened, then they did this, and it ended this way, okay? So you, your summaries that you guys have been writing for the last couple of years aren't really going to change, but they're gonna expect to be getting a little bit more involved and uh, detailed. Okay, you're gonna be making some predictions. This is a type of inference where you're gonna gather and analyze details to anticipate, and you're going to foresee what is coming. Um, that can be used in a story. When you read a story, you might look at an author, you might look at the cover image, um, like the, the cover of the book, and that's gonna help you predict what's, what the story is gonna be about. Or you could read the first chapter and then predict what's going to happen, okay? But you predict all through the stories. So it's important that we know what that is and we understand the importance of predictions. 
Okay. This was just a very quick overview of your unit vocabulary. Like I mentioned, it's not many words, but it is important. We will have a unit vocabulary review later in the week. But in our lessons, I'm going to go back and hint back to some of our vocabulary. We're going to annotate. We're going to predict. Um, we're going to talk about the implicit and explicit meanings in your text. So it's important that you focus on those and make sure that you remember what some of these vocabulary words mean. Okay, so until I see you again, have a great day and remember to stay on top of your reading. You guys have a lot of reading to do this week. Just stay on top of it and that way it won't be a big deal to get finished. Okay, have a good day.